Hello and welcome to the Winging It Travel Podcast YouTube channel. Join me on my journey as I travel across the world, seeking out adventures, meeting new people and trying out new things. On this week's episode, we check out Thunder Bay for a trendy morning coffee and a walk along the lakeside. Then we make our way to Pakasaw National Park, one of the best national parks we are going to see to date. And then we start the city tour of Eastern Canada by checking in to Ottawa. Let's go. Hello and welcome to today's episode and we're covering days 26 to 30, which is going to be Thunder Bay at the start and Puckasaw National Park and then driving into Ottawa. That'll be the end of this episode and then the next episode will be cracking on with Quebec. So Thunder Bay, we had a free night next to a boat launch, up early, uh, really early actually, no messing about, toilet, packed the car, got going. And we're going to go to Rosencrantz Roastery Cafe kind of a weird location they are sort of situated in like an industrial part but only five ten minute drive from where we're staying but fantastic coffee that good had the coffee just needed another one but instead bought some coffee beans which was an investment because we can't keep buying coffees all the time so we do make our own coffee in the morning if we've got a long day ahead driving so we've still got the bag of coffee it's fantastic and those guys are great doing great things very comfortable in there great coffee great selection of food Go and check those guys out, Rosencrantz. Then we want to check out Thunder Bay in the Marina Park area of the city because at the front you can park for free and get a great view of the Sleeping Giant. This is recommended to us by the person in the cab. And you walk along the front, nice clear sunny day along the water, very clear water, very calm. And distance is a Sleeping Giant. And the reason it's called that, if you look at it, actually looks like a woman laying down. It's very important to the indigenous communities there as well. Lots of festivals and things going on on that sleeping giant part of the island. From a marina park point of view, great views. Got to go and check that out. So then we went to St. Paul Roastery to get a coffee to go for the journey. Going to be about a three and a half hour drive to Puckasaw National Park, which is actually quite far away in terms of anywhere else. And we're going to go to Hattie Cove Campground. Arrived there in the afternoon and it's a first come first serve campsite. And the way it happens is you drive in, you get to the gate where the people who work there sort of situated are, and they go and tell you to look at all the campsites that you want. You pick one, you come back and tell them, and it's kind of that situation. So we parked up, got that instruction, drove around, and I think we got one of the last ones for a serviced campsite. Quite a few were actually taken up, um, but there's loads of unserviced campsites. There's you know, arriving on a day is not too bad. And we're there early afternoon, so it wasn't like late. Picked a campsite and it really was idyllic, like set away, own little driveway. You've got your electricity there, nice bench, very spacious and very hidden away, very quiet. This campsite is $63 for two nights for serviced, obviously a bit cheaper for unserviced. And they have great facilities, showers, bathrooms, trails. They have a visitor centre, Real cool and worth checking out. The service on your phone is not great. You get some service where the visitor centre is by the water. I think if you do some trails up, you can get some service too. But where the campsite was, no service. But it's nice to be offline for a few days. They have a fantastic local beach right by the visitor centre. So we chilled out there for a bit. Got some nice views. Calm, clear water. You can go swimming if you want to be refreshed, if you like. It's quite cold. A lot of people go canoeing. Uh, we saw a boat come in as well, so very happy to spend a bit of time there, get your chairs out, have a cup of tea, quite cool. And it's great to be back in nature after the city break in Winnipeg. This campsite is located on Lake Superior, so as we're driving to the National Park from Thunder Bay, we stopped off at a great little, I guess, stop off for, for drivers. It's got toilets and a few benches, and it's got like a little local beach on the lake, and fantastic, sensational views, clear day, sunny day views as far as you can see the lake is huge feels like you're on the coast unbelievable a lot of bikers stopping there as well it's just an idyllic area and the campsite is set amongst that islands water viewpoints and in amongst the trees when you're camping it really is an idyllic place and we're so happy that we came here to stay the night the first night we just admired the local area if you like and the next day we're going to do some trails so the next day in Pakistan we have brekkie and then went out to do a few walks to a few viewpoints overlooking the local area. And these aren't super hard. These are fairly easy walks. I'd say easy in terms of trajectory, 
distance terrains okay not the best marked trails but you can kind of work it out we kept bumping into a couple from america who kept getting lost and i can see why it's not that easily marked but not too bad in terms of terrain so the easy trails or walks you can do is the boardwalk beach trail that's pretty easy and the walk around the hattie cove visit center that's pretty easy as well uh, they go up and down a little bit but they're combined is a nice little walk we also combined two moderate trails which are called the beach trail and the southern headland trail these go further up on the rocks red chairs are up there as well go and sit in them enjoy the views and when you get to the top of these viewpoints you start to see that clear crisp blue water amongst these islands and you start to appreciate how awesome this area is and it was a great little walk there's a fantastic little beach as well on that boardwalk that you can turn out into. Very calm water, you go swimming, lots of beach access, lots of sand, and very popular with locals and or people staying there with families and kids because it's just a nice little area to hang out in. That's pretty cool too. So we smashed in a load of steps, great views, had a shower, had a nice chill evening in nature amongst the trees at our campsite. I think this is one of the best ones we stayed at to this point because it's just so nice to be in a great area but also great facilities easy access easy stuff we just loved it and it's great value for the price that it costs to stay there so to reiterate hattie cove campground is a must you must go and visit when in ontario and then next morning the next day we're going to drive to jeremy's truck stop <laughs> this is a seven hour drive from this campsite we're aiming for there because it's a good location and it's free and we want to try and test out a truck stop. In theory, great, because they're going to have showers, probably a restaurant, a toilet, at least outside, and lots of space, and probably a petrol station. It's exactly that. We arrived after seven hours, pretty much hugging the one highway. Long drive again, we switched it up. Got to switch up on those long days of driving. Arrived fairly easy, in good time. Wasn't that late, wasn't that dark. The only bad thing is the restaurant, despite on Google saying it closes at 10 or nine it closed at seven so it closed pretty early and we arrived just about seven o'clock so we couldn't get anything at the restaurant but we had backed up sandwiches in the cool box and fridge for the journey but this restaurant has an attachment of a convenience store and they have showers and toilets and i think it's free to go and use and obviously they're for truckers so make sure you get in there before 10 because they do close at 10 but up to that point free to use on this journey to the truck stop there was one stop at Salt Set Marie and we stopped off for, for Tim's and a coffee, put around the late afternoon mark, change up the journey, stop off and check out a new place. And yeah, it's right near the US border. So I guess it's almost like a border town. I think you just literally go over the bridge and you're in USA, but cool to stop off there. And from there, we cracked on to Jeremy's truck stop. Also, another moment on this road trip on this day was the halfway point on the Canadian Highway 1. We stopped off there, got the sign, got the photo pretty good achievement going from one end to the other and just pretty insane to think how much we've traveled as a six seven thousand kilometers whatever it is at this point and it's only halfway just proves how big this country is but cool thing to tick off and yeah a sense of achievement whilst getting off there and getting that photo and we felt so small these lorries are huge these trucks are massive but this little camper van tucked ourselves away got the chairs out had our sandwiches and it was yeah it's all right pretty comfortable fairly quiet for a truck stop toilet was available and not bad for free the only blight on the evening was i got stung by wasp which was the first time that's ever happened and yeah it bloody well hurt but other than that a great option for a free night if you're on a road trip because they have all the facilities and you're allowed just to park there it is what it's designed to do this is a patron shout out to laura from the swamp soup stickers who has contributed five pounds to the podcast on my patreon Thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate it. And it helps the podcast to keep going in the future. If you're interested, head to the show notes where you'll find a link to my patron. The website address is patreon.com forward slash Wigginet Travel Podcast. For five English pounds, you will receive some trendy stickers from myself and the post. A shout out on each episode and also my digital travel planner by email. Thank you for your support. So next morning, wake up early, uh, toilet and straight off, no, no point hanging around. And we're going to Sudbury for a coffee. And we stopped off at Salute Coffee Company. This is a great little coffee company in Sudbury if you want to stop off there. Fantastic location. 
easy to get to. Aircon inside, loads of options, great coffee, would highly recommend it. And obviously went to Tim's for another bagel. Journey to Ottawa is going to take six hours, so it's a bit of a heck of a day. Got in there early, got refreshed and got going. Ottawa is obviously the first proper big city east, so we're going to check out that with a and b a bed and breakfast. And yeah, the six-hour journey was okay. Not too bad, not too busy. Got there late afternoon at a place called Graham's Homestay. Would recommend this on booking.com. A very charming family who owns it. Very comfortable. It's a room with a shared bathroom. Can't use the kitchen, but they give you a breakfast in the morning. And they're in the Bayshore area of Ottawa. So it's probably about 20, 25 minutes drive into central Ottawa. But with a car, decent price and decent location. There's some amenities nearby. There's a Walmart, Ikea and stuff like that. And after a lot of driving, we just got back at a Coke. Got to take her in, chilled out and just enjoyed the B&B. Next morning was a sightseeing day in Ottawa. Parked the car about a 20 minute walk, maybe 25 minute walk from downtown. You got to pay to park in downtown as well in Ottawa. So we got into an area where they had three hour slots. You can risk those. They're not checking them every hour of the day so we actually risked four hours there got away with it parked the car up and walked into town that area is called centre town so there's a lot going on there anyway it's fairly close to right in downtown and you can find uh, three hour spots there so we wandered into town it's a bit like going to London really it's Parliament Hill they've got national museums there they've got all these plaques describing how Canada became Canada and all the history behind it and we went to Byward Market yeah, ticked off a few sites, Byward Market, Majors Hill Park, stuff like that. And there's a nice little canal in Ottawa where you can just get into a park, walk down from Major Hill Park, and then just walk along the canal. And we actually did that on the way back to the car. Very nice feel, very touristy feel. It's like government tourists. Uh, very, I thought it was quite clean. And it's got this weird quirk where over the river is Quebec. So Ottawa is kind of halved on the Ontario side, all the government stuff cross the river and you're straight into Quebec and French speaking and French signs and stuff like that so it's quite quirky and we'll see that on the next episode as we drive out of Ottawa but Ottawa itself very friendly very nice enjoyed it lots going on lots to see and do we had a classic beaver tails dessert in Ottawa that was a classic Canadian thing to do very sugary very chocolatey and we just wandered around town had to get back for an interview for Rick Gazarian's podcast episode which was out a few weeks ago four hours was a lot in terms of fitting a lot of stuff in we could have spent a bit more time but that's a good start to Ottawa and I did like the feel not sure if it's a place I'd move to to live and work but I did enjoy the ambience of the place canal was nice buildings are nice lots of amenities it was very nice to go and check out walking back through centre town that's, a, that's obviously an area to live in lots going on and really enjoyed that area too Graham's homestay the B&B was just a real comfortable stay they had a dog called harry lovely little dog comes up to you sits by your feet brilliant breakfast a lot of options cereal toast uh, tea coffee all that sort of stuff as well the owner is really nice made sure we had a comfortable stay was interested in our travels just a really nice vibe and i would highly recommend it so it's graham's homestay pop that in booking.com you'll find it and it's 229 dollars for two nights it comes with breakfast so i don't think you get much cheaper than that hostels are impossible in Canada so that is the next best option I think in Ottawa so that sums up today's episode so we're into the cities now Ottawa is the start of that Uh, nice mix this one national parks and cities off grid on grid touristy non touristy lots of nature lots of city stuff so a nice eclectic episode there for different types of travel and the next one we'll be going into Quebec which was a cool experience and we're going to go into La Morrissey National Park Quebec City and then Montreal. But for today's episode, that is it. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time. Please follow and subscribe on my YouTube channel today, and please rate and review the podcast on any podcast platform that you use. Thank you.